Is this the reason for the climate phenomena of recent months? The impact of the Hunga Tonga volcano in the South Seas is probably much more massive than assumed, and we clarify in this video what impact this has on the atmosphere and on the global climate. So be sure to stay tuned to the end and if you like it, I'm galactically happy for a thumbs up and a comment, because that's how we get the YouTube algorithm to show this video to even more people. Thanks a lot guys and welcome. The South Sea nation of Tonga is usually known for gorgeous sandy beaches and picturesque islands full of palm trees. But last year it hit the headlines for something less harmonious, namely a volcanic eruption. On January 15, 2022, Hunga Tonga Hunga Haparai erupted. A submarine volcano located about 64 kilometers from the main island of the state of Tonga. Most of this volcano lies below the surface of the water, and during eruptions, therefore, new islands can form above sea level as the rising magma breaches the water. That's why the 2022 eruption was so fascinating to researchers, because it's really not every day that such a large submarine volcano goes off and you can study live what happens. This image from the GO-17 weather satellite shows just how incredibly violent this eruption was. The maximum spread of the ash cloud in this image is 470 kilometers, madness. I put this over the map of Germany, with the center right in the capital Berlin, and yes, we can see, such an eruption would have affected large parts of the whole country and covered it under a thick layer of ash. Accordingly, the direct impact of the eruption on the state of Tonga was, of course, massive. The local population suffered from the ash cloud and from ground shaking, and air traffic was suspended for some time. But the really interesting question is, what global impact did this have? And do they perhaps continue to this day? Because if we look at the dimensions of this eruption on the satellite images, then I think it becomes relatively clear that we are dealing with an event with global reach. By the way, this is also proven by the numbers. According to NASA, the eruption column was up to 58 kilometers high and thus reached into the atmospheric layer, the mesosphere. This made it the highest eruption cloud ever observed from space. If that much stuff is being thrown into the atmosphere, then there must be some effects up there. So let's take a closer look. Here we see an image taken on January 16, 2022 from the ISS showing the ash cloud in the atmosphere. Unbelievable. Greetings, by the way, go out to all the flat earthers who would somehow have to explain why you can clearly see the curvature of the planet in this image. In addition to ash, volcanoes emit a variety of gases, including sulfur dioxide, hydrogen chloride, hydrogen fluoride, and carbon dioxide, or CO2. These gases can disperse in the atmosphere and affect both air quality and global climate. Sulfur dioxide can form aerosols in the stratosphere that reflect sunlight and cause short-term cooling of the Earth's surface. So sulfur dioxide in particular is of interest because it can potentially lead to cooling. So has the Hunga Tonga affected global climate through sulfur dioxide? Probably only to a very small extent. This is because the total amount of sulfur dioxide released into the atmosphere by the eruption is estimated at 400,000 tons. So already considerable quantity, but one assumes that a noticeable influence on the climate would be to be expected only starting from 5 million tons, thus at least the tenfold of that, which the Hunga Tonga belched out. So I can already hear some of you saying, Boring, so why are you even telling us about it? Because the Hunga Tonga catapulted even more into the atmosphere. We remember, it's a submarine volcano. What, of course, is ejected into the atmosphere during such a volcano? Correct, water. Or much more water vapor. And lots of it. Let these numbers roll off your tongue. 146 million tons of water were thrown up into the stratosphere up to a height of 40 kilometers. The amount of water vapor in the stratosphere increased by 10 to 15%. Now, of course, one could say, who cares about water vapor? It will hardly have any relevant effects, wrong. Water vapor is the most important contributor to the greenhouse effect in the atmosphere, so it is a bigger factor than CO2. When the sun's rays reach the Earth, it heats up and radiates the heat back into the atmosphere in the form of infrared radiation. 
water vapor absorbs some of this infrared radiation and then emits it in all directions, including back to the Earth's surface. This warns the environment and enhances the greenhouse effect. So it can be stated that normal volcanic eruptions tend to cause cooling due to sulfur dioxide, but submarine volcanic eruptions tend to cause warming due to water vapor. So from a climatologist's point of view, there are good volcanoes and bad volcanoes, so to speak. Well, and if a gigantic amount of water vapor is being blown into the atmosphere, and water vapor is the most important contributor to the greenhouse effect, then it is reasonable to suspect that this is having a significant impact on global climate. And that's exactly what researchers at Oxford University have found in a study. They simulated the effect from Hunga Tonga water vapor in the stratosphere for the next few years and found that it will be quite persistent. Stuart Jenkins, lead author of the study, said, Since there's very little turbulence in the stratosphere to mess with the system, you can get a disturbance that lasts quite a long time in the atmospheric sense. And not only will it last a long time, but it will have a more massive impact. This 10 to 15% increase in water vapor in the stratosphere, the largest increase scientists have ever documented. By the way, could cause the average global temperature to increase by as much as 0.035 degrees Celsius over the next five years. That doesn't sound like much, but as an impact of a single event, it's really substantial. And even a small change in global average temperature makes a big difference. Most importantly, this could be the straw that breaks the camel's back on the politically set goals. The goal, set by the United Nations Paris Agreement, is for the Earth's average temperature not to exceed its pre-industrial level by more than 1.5 degrees. In May 2022, the World Meteorological Organization announced that there is a 50% chance of exceeding the 1.5 degree threshold in the next five years. And the really exciting question now is, will Hunga Tonga get us over that threshold ahead of schedule? And the answer is, absolutely possible. The study states, we show that Hunga Tonga has a noticeable effect on the probability of immediately exceeding 1.5 degrees Celsius, increasing by 7% the probability that at least one of the next five years will exceed 1.5 degrees. So put another way, the new study shows that warming from the Hunga Tonga eruption increases the likelihood by 7% that in the next five years, that 1.5 degree mark will be cracked. Thus it is also clear that it is of course nevertheless only a secondary factor and the climate change is the main cause with the increase of the global average temperature, but it is just above all for short-term developments quite a substantial factor. And I personally find it a bit curious that such natural factors don't get much mention in the media. If the 1.5 degree mark is exceeded at some point, then one will probably hear less that this would have happened later, if there had not been natural factors like the Hunga Tonga eruption. As I said, it's not the main factor by any means, but I think good reporting would include naming all the factors according to their magnitude. In addition, a new El Nino phase has started this year. This is a climatic phenomenon in the eastern Pacific that affects the climate of the entire planet. El Nino and Hunga Tonga together are a considerable influence on the climate, which should be named as such. Of course I will keep you up to date on how this climate phenomenon is progressing. But this is only possible if you subscribe to my channel and from the YouTube statistics. I know that the majority of viewers do not follow the channel at all. It's completely free, it helps me immensely and you won't miss any more galactic videos. So all of you press the subscribe button. But let's travel now from the Earth deep into the universe, direction of black holes. More and more astronomers consider the unbelievable suspicion that the whole cosmos is in a black hole as realistic. And you will be surprised how well this theory fits to many observations. If you want to know if you live in a black hole, don't miss the next video. It has become very exciting again, and of course don't forget to visit my space store. Otherwise I would say, see you in the next video. Take care guys.